Today we're talking about the planet Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun and the smallest planet in our solar system. Actually, it's smaller than some of the moons in our solar system. So it's smaller than Ganymede. It's only a little bit bigger than Earth's moon itself. So a Mercury year, the time it takes for Mercury to go around the Sun, is 88 Earth days. So if you lived on Mercury, you'd be much older than you are on Earth. Yeah, there's this very strange thing about Mercury, um, that it actually rotates very slowly. And so a day, the time it takes the planet to rotate once, is very long compared to a year, uh, the time it takes to actually go around the Sun. And so uh, a, a day, but, well, there's this strange effect that, that uh, for every twice that you go round, round the sun, the planet rotates three times. So three days on Mercury is the same as two years. And it's not just approximately true, it's exactly true. It's exactly true that it goes around exactly three times, uh, rotates exactly three times for every twice it orbits around the sun. And this is a phenomenon called resonance, where you have this matching up of things exactly in, in integer numbers re related to one another is, is resonance. Um, it's the same kind of thing as with the moon going around the Earth, that the moon rotates exactly once, so it has a one day for every year, for every time it goes around the Earth, uh, which is why we always see the same face of the moon towards us. But the case in Mercury is kind of a bit subtler, um, because it's not a one-to-one -one resonance, it's what's called a three-to-two resonance. It rotates three times for every twice it goes around. So if you're standing on Mercury, you see the sun in the sky for almost six months as it rises really slowly and then just hangs out there and then moves down. You wouldn't have a blue sky because you don't have any atmosphere to scatter the photons, but you would be able to see distant stars. So you'd have kind of a nighttime sky, but you'd still have illumination from the sun. So you'd still be bright, you'd still have a shadow. You just wouldn't have a blue sky. Like what we saw when the men walked on the moon. Yeah, exactly like what we saw when the men walked on the moon. So the, the basic idea is that planets go around the sun following ellipses, something one of the things that Kepler figured out a very long time ago. Um, but it's not quite true. If you really had a point-like planet going around a point-like sun, they would indeed follow exactly ellipses. But because planets aren't exactly point-like, and there are other planets all perturbing their orbits and so on, they don't actually follow exactly ellipses. In about the mid-1800s, people were trying to map out the orbits of planets based on Newtonian physics. And we did very well predicting um, the Moon's orbit and Mars's orbit and Venus's, but Mercury's, for some reason, was a little strange. It was um, off from what Newtonian physics predicted. And so this actually led people to suggest that there might actually be another planet that was perturbing the orbit of Mercury that was even closer to the Sun. So people came up with the idea that there was this planet called Vulcan, even closer to the Sun, that was actually causing it. But then people searched for this planet and couldn't find it. Um, and it turned out that the answer was, was general relativity, because general relativity says that the laws of gravity you've been using, the Newtonian laws of gravity, aren't quite right. And when you put in what's known as the post-Newtonian correction, which is just kind of starting to put general relativity into the laws of gravity, um, you find actually you can explain all this difference between the orbit you actually see and the orbit you're expecting to see. So this was one of the, the very first pieces of actual evidence for the validity of Einstein's general theory of relativity. So what Newton says was happen is right, but only in the limit when gravity isn't very strong. So when there's very weak things going on, Newtonian gravity is pretty much spot on. Uh, what general relativity says is that when gravity starts getting stronger, then you get further and further away from that Newtonian law of gravity. And so you're now, with, the, with the, the case of Mercury, gravity's starting to get that little bit stronger because the two are a bit closer together, and so you start seeing the very subtle first effects of general relativity. So Newtonian gravity is kind of a limit that works part of the time, but general relativity is kind of the big picture that works all the time. We have sent a couple spacecraft to Mercury. The first one was in the 70s. It was called Mariner 10, and it did a couple orbits around and took images and sent it back. But actually, there was an entire side of Mercury that we weren't able to see with that spacecraft. So we recently, NASA recently sent another one called the Messenger, and it took off in 2004, and it's been traveling since then. And just last year, it arrived, so it's been doing a few close passes around Mercury, and it will eventually orbit in 2011. So through the messenger, we've been able to see really high resolution images of all the crater structures. Some of the craters, when these impactors come and they land on the planet, a lot of material gets shot up and then it spreads these bright rays around. So we can see evidence for that on Mercury and there's not any activity happening to erase those effects. Actually, messenger just saw evidence for volcan volcanic activity on Mercury. Mercury is very close to the sun always, and it's very close to the sun in our sky. So whenever you try to look for it, it's always going to be very close to 
to the sun. So you can just see it right before the sun sets or just um, before the sun rises. And so since it passes around the sun, very often it passes in front of the sun, which you can only see with very fancy filters and things like that. But this is what we call a transit when Mercury actually passes right in front of the sun. At nighttime on Mercury, the part of the planet that is not facing the sun, uh, when it's the farthest away from the sun, is actually very cold. So it's minus 180 degrees Celsius. And when the planet is the closest to the sun and the part that's facing the sun, the daytime part, is actually very hot, so it's 430 degrees Celsius. Do you want to take that umbrella? <laughs> no, I certainly wouldn't need this umbrella if I went to Mercury. There's no atmosphere, no clouds, no anything that would cause me to not have a nice day. <laughs> Other than the heat. <laughs> yeah, you might want to use it to keep the sun off. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs>